This morning we're going to talk about atomic revival. That's explosive, isn't it? Very, very exciting. Very exciting. Um, <coughs> I want to talk a little bit about where we've been, where we are now, and where we're going. And uh, I was traveling last week and was able to, for the first time in a while, was able to be with people um, that are just excited like us, that have just a passion and a hunger for the Lord. And what I saw was this wave of God's presence move across uh, the people that were there. And I was telling them when I was speaking and I went to the church that hosted the event on that Sunday was that's what's happening to us too. There's a wave of God that is pouring out in his people, through his people as they gather. And it's interesting to watch because it's not the same way every time we gather. There's a uniqueness that is happening. When we gather together, it's not uh, the same as it was the Thursday before, the Wednesday before, the Sunday before. It's different. And God is training us to adjust to the move that he is doing in the moment. Instead of us looking for what we're familiar with, we are looking at what God is doing. Amen. little technical difficulty thank you so he wants us to be so hypersensitive to him and what he's doing that when that first breath comes across us there is a quickening of our spirit to adjust to his move It really is a training season for us because as we're trained inside we're prepared to release what we've learned when we go outside so over the last 18 to 24 months it has been a season of repentance it's been a season of God calling his people back to him it's been a season of exposure, a season of reset, and really a season of awakening for us. And it's not like we were ignoring him. We just got distracted. We got busy. And I know, uh, as I was sharing uh, not too long ago, you know, we spent last year preaching repentance and I was like God I know that there is another message that I have in here he's like yes yeah, repentance <laughs> and it's because God was preparing us for what was coming that we had to turn our hearts unto the Lord and um, Zechariah 1 3 says thus says the Lord of hosts return to me says the Lord of hosts and I will return to you and that's what has happened in this season. We're in a season where we're in this place of intimacy, of oneness, of uh, presence, of manifestation. You know, I don't know how else you can describe it, but God is all over us. Because we've spent time turning away from the things that were distracting us, the way from the things that were luring us away, and turn back into the heart and the intimacy of God. So right now, we're in a returned season where we have turned to him, and he has turned to us. And there is an intimacy that's happening. And out of intimacy comes manifestation. Out of manifestation comes revelation. And out of revelation comes declaration. Because what, what's revealed to us, we declare. 
And what we declare is released. And what is released, God responds to because we're releasing his word, which is creating all of heaven to respond. So there is a momentum that is being built that is actually operating right now that is stirring up all of the earth to turn to the Lord. God always has his best available for us. And we're in a season of his absolute outpouring over us. So I want to talk about a couple things that I see going on and what we're looking forward in the, in the year to come. And we're looking for a whole lot of yes, a whole lot of wonderful we're looking for a whole lot of revival. We're, we're looking for a harvest that is coming in right now that is going to be so dynamic and so big that it's going to be hard to wrap our heads around. But God has prepared us as his church, as his body, to disciple the harvest that is coming in. And that's why I always say, we've got to declare and work on our health. We have to do what I call the Moses principle, where our eyes do not grow dim and our bodies do not lose its vigor, so that we are around to help disciple this harvest that is coming in. He's going to need all of us. And we will be doing discipling in different ways, but he needs every one of us boots to the ground right now, boots to the ground. So there's a couple of scriptures we're going to look at. First is Luke 18, and I want to talk a little bit about persistence. And it's Luke 18, we're going to start in verse 1. Because we have been in a season of prayer. We have been in a season of storming the gates of heaven to bring down what is needed on earth. Verse 1, it says, Then he spoke a parable to them, that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was a certain city, a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now, we've been in a season where officials have not feared God, and they have not regarded man. There was a certain city, oh, sorry, I read that part, um, verse 3. Now, there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. <laughs> Have you ever just worn somebody out till they said yes? Right, husbands and wives? That's what he's saying. We are just wearing them down until they say yes. And it goes on, it says, verse 6, Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? Will, will God not have vengeance for us, his elect? Just think what happened with the persistent widow. The unjust judge gave in because of her persistence. She did not get weary of pulling on his coattail saying, I need justice, I need justice, I need vengeance, I need justice. And we have been a people that have prayed. We have been aggressive in our prayer. We have not let go until the shift has happened in our favor. And we can see, even within our nation, that there have been shifts that have happened because the people of God have not been 
relentless, I mean, have been relentless in their prayer. We have seen laws overturn. We have seen life elevated again. Because just like the persistent widow, we have not let go until we got the answer that would exalt and glorify our God. And God will fight for his elect as we continue to press hard. We continue to push in. We continue to not let go until we get an answer that will glorify God. That's our goal. Our persistence has brought a breakthrough. And there's no time to let up now. We got to push even harder. We've got to press when we see how much victory we've had. Not only do we celebrate, but it encourages us to press harder. Because if I can get what I got from for the Lord, from the Lord, then imagine what will happen if I go even harder. My prayer, my declaration, my, my uh, exaltation of Christ, my intimacy, my turning back to him, all of these things has shifted the momentum our way. The momentum has shifted our way. Do you believe that? I know it has. There has been a change in the atmosphere because of what our prayers have done. Because we have repented, because we have turned back, because we've checked every hidden place within us to make sure that it aligns with what God has for us, with, with who God says we are. Whew. This is the beginning of the greatest worldwide revival. It is not located to just one place or the other, one continent, one state, one country. This is a worldwide revival that is happening. This is happening all over the world. You can say amen. amen. You can because it's exciting. We are seeing heart after heart, face after face, Turn to God. So good. The Lord spoke to me the other day and he said, the nations are coming to me. Don't let up. Pray and pray and pray. Press in for you are on the uh, precipice of breakthrough. One warning comes with this that I want to share and it's out of uh, Ezra 3. Verse 10. Ezra 3, they are rebuilding the temple. And it says in verse 10, when the builders laid the foundations of the temple of the Lord, the priests stood in their apparel with trumpets and the Levites and the son of Asbuk with symbols to praise the Lord according uh, to the ordinance of David, the king of Israel. And they sang responsibly, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Then all the people shouted with, great, uh, with a great shout. And when they praised the Lord, because of the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid, they were over the top. Then it says... Verse 12, but many of the priests and Levites and heads of the father houses, old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice when the foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes. They wept. Yet many shouted loud for joy so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a, shout, a loud shout, and a sound was heard from afar. The one thing, this is the warning the Lord gave me to share, is that 
we can't look at the former and wish it was the present. We have to understand what God is doing now is what God is doing now. And sometimes we look back and say, well, I wish we could go back to when whatever your favorite thing is. I know even I've thought about, oh, I love reading about Catherine Coleman and that healing time that happened during that season. But we have such a greater anointing in the healing than, we, than they did back then because it's, you know, once we have a breakthrough, it's a breakthrough for everyone. Once there was the, the, a breakthrough of that level of healing where you don't have to touch anybody, that the move of God just comes across and people get healed, then that is multiplied. So we've seen healing in this day that wasn't seen before. Healing across the internet, healing across TVs, all different ways. So the Lord wants us not to mourn for what was the past, but to acknowledge that God is in the middle of what is now and what is the future to come. And it may not look like what it was, but it's going to be better than we could ever imagine. So that's kind of our little heads up for it. Now let's turn to Zechariah 2, and we're going to talk about some of, the air, some of the moves of God across the globe. And I talk about this across the globe because it is happening across the globe. Uh, we're, you know, we have a ministry in India. We have one in Pakistan. We have them um, in different, uh, Colombia, you know, we're connected to. But those are just the ones we know God is doing this incredible move. And we just need to acknowledge that it is so much bigger than we can even comprehend. We understand that the news does not run segments on the move of God at 6 o'clock every night. So we have to dig it up by connecting with the people, hearing their testimonies. Because it's so powerful what God is doing. That's what we need. We need a 24-hour God testimony, move of God station. Somebody, somebody start that. Somebody start that. Huh? Oh, the pointer. That's right. We have one. You can see it on YouTube, the pointer. So Zechariah 2, 1. So here's a couple of the divine strategies God has given me for this hour. Zechariah 2, 1, 1 through 5. It says, today I raised my eyes and looked. And behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. So I said, where are you going? And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem, to see what it is width and what it is length. And, and there was an angel who talked with me going out and another angel coming out to meet him. Who said to him, run, speak to this young man saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. For I say the Lord, for I says the Lord will be a wall of fire around her and I will be the glory in her midst. I will be the glory in her midst. This one phrase really stood out to me. It says that Jerusalem shall be inhabited as, as towns without walls because of the multitude and God will be its protection around it. God is protecting his territory. He is protecting what he's called forward. He is protecting and he is calling his people to gather in their territory, hold tight to their territory, whatever that is, whether it's a nation, whether it's a city, whether it's a business, whether it's your family, whatever the territory God has had you stick your a flag in the ground to show you have it, God is telling you, hold tight to your territory. 
because he is providing a wall of fire around it. He is providing the protection that you need in order to multiply your territory. So it's a season of multiplication for your territory. It's a season. It's an era of protection, of fire. I love that image of just the wall of fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit surrounding what he has anointed you to do. He's surrounding what he has anointed you to do. Let's go to verse 10. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for behold, I am coming. Listen to that. And I will dwell in your midst. That is what's happening right now. We know that the Lord is always with us. We do know that. But there is a sovereign time of manifestation that is happening right now. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord. And in that day, they shall become my people. And I will dwell in your midst then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you and the Lord will take possession of Judah as his inheritance in the Holy Land and will again choose Jerusalem. Be silent all flesh before the Lord for he is aroused from his holy habitation. He is calling his people into this holiness into this oneness with him. He is calling his people to see the manifestation, the presence that he has, he has uh, released for them. And he is calling the nations. There's a call to the nations and there's a call to unity in this season. And we're seeing, we're seeing, you know, some Mideastern countries with the peace with uh, Israel. We're seeing uh, yesterday the, the uh, countries around the world began to pray and declare over America. Uh, we are seeing a unity of nations. And we know there will be some that will not unite. But we aren't worried about them. Because God has declared he will be a wall of fire around us. And it doesn't mean that they aren't going to be activated in some way by the enemy. But what it means is that there is such power in our worldwide unity. Such power as the nations are aligning under one holy God. Just get a picture of that. Visualize what that looks like. As the nations align together under one God. As revival breaks out in city after city, town after town, the populated, the minimal populated. As the spirit falls, as people are baptized and renewed and given a new life. Just get a picture of that. Because it is happening. Let God impart a picture into your mind, into your heart, because this is happening. And we are celebrating the move of God in the season. We've come out of a season of darkness into the season of light. And we are shaking off the shackles, the things that have held us captive and walking in to a freedom in the spirit that is united in nations. United in nations. It's just not one county or one little town. It is the world erupting in praise unto the Lord. God, we just thank you for that. Jesus, we just thank you for that. And I want to read one other scripture, and it's going to be out of Zechariah 4. Um, actually, Zechariah 3 and then 4. Sorry about that. We're going to read 3, verse 6. The angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If you walk in my ways and you keep my commandment, then you will also judge my house. And likewise, have charge over my courts. I will give you places to walk 
among these who stand here. Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before me, for they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch, the Messiah, for all the world to see. You know, we sang a song about earlier about um, how God has opened up our eyes. He has opened up our spiritual eyes to be able to see Jesus, the living Savior. to be able to encounter the one who gave it all for us so that we could, we could have our sins forgiven, so that we could have a new life, so we could be born again and become a new creation. God is, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wondrous sign that is happening right now. And our last scripture is going to be Zechariah 4, 1, and 6. And this really talks about the unity of the church, and the unity of the government and bringing those two together as it talks about Joshua in verse 1 it says the now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me there definitely is an awakening that has happened as a man who had wakened out of his sleep and he said to me what do you see and uh, let's skip down to verse 6 it says um, so he answered me and said, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, who was the government. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. That mountain, that obstacle is going to be flat. It's going to become a plain. And, and what is happening is we are seeing right now the emergence of the body the emergence of the government together, operating together to govern the people in a way that aligns with the word of God. And it is the people of God that are, that are not only moving into position, but they are becoming advisors to those who hold governmental positions. And as they become advisors to them, we are seeing a shift, a dynamic divine shift of what is coming out of the governmental houses. Is it perfect? No, not yet. Will it ever be perfect? I don't know, probably not until Jesus comes. But what we are seeing is a rising up of victories in a governmental season where the people of God are influencers in that region. And we know that when the influence comes through the government, it comes through the church, it will also flow through the families. It will flow through the other mountains, the arts. We're seeing television sh uh, networks that are coming out that are purely focused on godly productions. We're seeing the art shift. We're, we're seeing the mountain shift toward God. And that's what we're seeing. Does it mean we're going to have uh, adversity come toward us? Absolutely. Because any time the people of God rise, the movement of God happens, the enemy comes running toward us because he wants to stop it. Is he going to win? No. We know he is not going to win. We know he is not going to win. When I was in um, Phoenix a couple weeks, last week, I think it was, someone shared a vision that they had gotten where the Lord had sent an angel that actually, they actually saw him in the room. They thought a person come in the room. He was completely armored. And he, and he, they asked, who is he? And he said, he is the angel that protects the river, the outpouring. The assault is great on the outpouring to stop it at all cost. This is why he is heavenly armed. Because the assault is great to stop the outpouring. 
but the outpouring, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And it says, after the angel walked in the river that flowed behind him. The outpouring is different than past movements because the source of this awakening, this movement, this wave, this revival, this outpouring is the river of God. The river of God. And while they were sharing that vision, God showed me these atoms flying through the air. And the atoms were bodies of people you know, the body of Christ coming together. And I looked up the word Adam and it says the term Adam comes from the Greek word for indivisible. It means it can't be divided. And as I was, I had to look that up because, you know, it wasn't right off the top of my head. So as I was, you know, just seeing these atoms flying, what I saw was as the atoms began to join together, unite together that that it was creating this atomic revival this explosion of God's people because we have stewarded what we've got in in our place as they have stewarded as the others have stewarded and as we God is doing this global movement we are becoming united in the spirit and it's creating this atomic revival this explosion of God's people, of God's presence, of God's breakthrough for this season, for this era, for this time. That's awesome. I'm going to tell you, God, you are awesome. <laughs> and you are faithful. And you are good. And we are the people that have been chosen in this, in this era. We were born for this. Say, I was born for this. I was born for what's going on right now. I'm born to steward a global revival. Because my territory is sure. God is my wall of fire. I am participating in the kingdom call. And I will be part of the spark that brings this economic burst. Each one of us is a spark in this burst. Whew. We are a spark in this burst. So I'm going to end with this scripture and then we're going to pray. Amos 9, and this is out of the message version. It says, um, um, verse 12, it says, oh, I'm sorry, verse 13. It says, yes, indeed, it won't be long now. Things are going to happen so fast your head is going to spin. Your head's going to swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other, you won't be able to keep up. Who's ready for that? Everything will be happening at once, and everywhere you look, blessings. Blessings like wine pouring off the mountain and hills. I'll make everything right again for my people, Israel. So if you'll stand, we're going to pray for a few minutes. So, Father, we just thank you that we are part of this global revival. We're part of this economic, I mean, atomic revival, this explosion. And, God, we are declaring over the nations of this earth. We're declaring life over them. We're declaring life in every country. We're, we're interceding for every governmental leader. God, we're just calling them forth. We're calling their spirit to attention. We're saying, encounter the living God. Let the Holy Spirit guide every step, every parliament, every congress, every house, every monarch. Lord, thank you for pouring out in this season. God, we thank you for the people that have been called by your name. We thank you that we are positioned right now for this season. We are positioned to hold our territory. We are positioned knowing that you are a wall of fire around us. God, we are positioned with everything we need because you have supplied everything we need. 
God, we're, ex- we're positioned for expansion. We declare expansion over your people. We declare expansion over this harvest. God, we declare that there are so many people that are ready to be discipled. And we are ready to step into that discipling mode. God, we want to raise up a mature body. God, we declare over America that we will be the ground shaker and the deal breaker for the enemy. That he will have nowhere to step. We declare that every arm of our government will be shaken loose from the enemy and will be restructured just like your word says that if you walk in my ways then you'll have everything that our governmental arms will walk in your ways we declare that over the church we declare it over every church every church leader that they will walk in your ways that they will be holy unto you. God, we declare that we are your people and that you are our God. And God, we we just want to see the greater movement, not only in our home, in our town, in our region, in our state, in our country, but across the globe, that not one continent will be missed with the fire of God going up it that it will burn all the way through. It will devour the sin. It will release the power of the Holy Spirit to convict. It will turn the hearts of the people to you, Jesus. So God, we just thank you that there is a move like we've never seen before, that there's going to be a lineup of nations that are declaring the goodness and the glory of the Lord over their country. God, we speak to the continents and we say, God, thank you that the continents are being consumed by the fire of God and your glory is being released over the hearts of your people. We speak to economic realms. Lord, we say thank you, God, that you supply plenty. We have an abundance. There are blessing over blessing. We thank you, God, that businesses are rising. We thank you that there is economic bursting forth. Finances are here. That, that we have more than enough to not only support and, and uh, encourage, but to move the kingdom forward. We, we, God, I just want to declare uh, single families that need homes, that homes will pop up that will be available, will be placed in their hands. God, that, that children will be fed across this globe, Lord, that nations will see the uh, burden they carry for the people and to take care of those of, of less fortune of, that have been taken uh, out. So, God, we just thank you that lives are being saved, that human trafficking is being broken, that children are coming up out of poverty into homes, into education. God, we are declaring that our educational systems will be broken of the lies of, of all this sexual misinformation and we will, will be released in the truth of identity and creation and who they are. So God, we're just declaring it all. All that you have uh, sovereignly released over this season, all that you have released into our hearts, we're declaring that it will all be fulfilled and that we will be carriers of the promise. We will be birthers of the vision, and we will be workers and implementers of your plan, God. So thank you for your strategy, God. We just look forward to uh, the celebration every single day as we wake and know that there's been so much happening. God, we don't know what it all is. All we know is we celebrate you. All we know is we worship you. All we know is that you are the God of everything and that you are moving every day, every nanosecond. So even though we don't see it, we celebrate the victory in Jesus' name. And we all say, amen, amen. Thank you. 
Okay, if you'd like prayer, we're glad to pray. And uh, thank you so much, guys. I know that God is going to move mightily in your house today.